Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of Tiny Squares. And today I wanted to go on a bit of a journey to see about adding the right amount of detail and rendering to a pixel art sprite. And that sprite is of course the Mega Man right here. And this comes from my previous video where I scaled up a bunch of NES sprites and drew them with more detail. So the reason the Mega Man here feels somewhat incomplete is just because I was trying to stick with that original style and the five color palette of the NES. So today we're gonna take that result and just keep going to see if there's a more fitting level of rendering for this guy. Before anything else though, what I wanna do is just make a small adjustment to the colors. The original ones, which come directly from the NES sprite, are just a bit too saturated and bright. And I can't believe I'm saying that because I tend to really like things that are super vibrant and punchy like this. Uh, you know, maybe it's a sign that I'm maturing as an artist in some way, but uh, I just feel like toning these down just a touch, just a little bit. Really the biggest change I've made here is just to scale back the saturation from a full 100 down to about 75 for the uh, bluish tones. And I think that'll just be a little bit easier on the eyes. Now, the idea of making a sprite more detailed often includes that you'd start introducing new colors into it, uh, which I do intend to do. But for due diligence, I wanted to get a baseline reading of just what it'd be like to stay within the five color palette and repurpose those existing colors for various highlights and shading. So for example, we can use the black as a shade tone on the blue areas, and I'm just gonna apply it by sort of following the curvature of like the edge or kind of rounding it into a corner depending on what exact shape or piece of the sprite I'm applying it to. Um, from here, we can also use the cyan as a highlight on top of the blue. And I'm gonna position these highlights sort of towards the left side of each piece of the sprite, kind of opposite to where the shadows are. And they're also gonna be like continuous patches, uh, like where the pixels kind of staircase into one another to sort of keep the whole cluster connected as one like continuous island, I guess. You can definitely feel that these touches do give the idea that there's a strong light source and more rendering compared to where we started. But uh, the thing that's kind of messing it up here is that the cyan is maybe just a bit too strong to use as the highlight here. So your eyes get kind of scattered when you're trying to resolve the difference between a highlight and things that are just intended to be cyan by default. So to give this a softer touch, I'm gonna introduce new colors for the shadows and the highlights. I'm gonna start with this purpley color and I'll use that to shade the blue areas. And purple, by the way, is universally really good for this. Uh, it's just that hue shifting thing where you sort of lean the shadow color into purple a little bit and you gain some nice life out of that because it's introducing a whole new hue into the sprite as well. For the highlight color, I'm gonna create a new layer and set the opacity to 50%. So as you'd imagine, a uh, drawing like this only has half the strength of whatever selected color you have for your brush. So what I'll do is select the cyan color and then use it at this 50% level to create the highlights on top of the blue. And this is nice because the new color is exactly halfway between the original blue and cyan. So it's kind of perfectly balanced in that sense. In addition to being the highlight tone, I can also use that in-between color to shade the cyan areas. So it's nice that this 50% value is so evenly multi-purpose. And you can see that compared to the limited five color attempt, we've got probably an easier read on the shadows and highlights now. At this point though, when there's been rendering, you know, building on most of the costuming here, the plain skin tone really stands out and it's starting to look a bit under detailed by comparison. So I'm gonna shade this now using a slight pinkish tone. And again, that sort of follows that idea of like shifting the hue into a new color. Um, of course, this time we don't extend all the way into purple, uh, but pink is definitely like on the way there uh, and happens to look natural and vibrant against this particular skin tone. You'll actually often see similar color choices to this on the anime style key art for Mega Man. And in that way, I've also added a really light cyan sort of shade color on the eyes and the teeth. And again, that's just inspired by that shading style on the key art. So this is now up to a total of nine colors. And honestly, I'm pretty satisfied to call it at this result. But if we wanted to push things further, kind of purely for the sake of knowing where the line might be, um, we could try introducing more of those 50% in between colors to kind of soften up some of these transitions to the shaded areas. You actually see this thing uh, a lot on 16-bit style or PS1 era kind of pixel art. Uh, like for example, the Mega Man sprite from Marvel vs. Capcom uh, it's got all these sort of like stepped highlights, you know? 
When we're just looking at them pixel perfect like this, it sometimes looks like a bit too much banding or noise or maybe unnecessary. But when it's viewed through a CRT display, like what would have been the intent back in the day, it creates a really soft, uh, painterly kind of gradient. You know, I can't really say quite yet how successful my gradients are gonna be, but we'll check those on the CRT at the end and just kind of see how it does compared to the nine color results. I also made this one as just sort of like has a gratuitous number of color steps and these obnoxious highlights. And I was really just curious about like pushing it way too far, kind of like I did back with the Mario sprite. And we'll just see how that one does as well in the CRT, I guess. But the last thing I wanted to go back to was just this idea of the Marvel vs. Capcom sprite, actually. I was noticing how the two different blue tones are much closer together than the cyan and the blue that I'd been working with, uh, even after having dialed them back from that NES palette. So this got me thinking that we may be able to solve that issue from earlier of just how strong those highlights looked on the five color sprite attempt. So I brought that one back to the drawing board and really pulled back some of the saturation and brightness and did some rebalancing and came up with this revised five color version. Now, I'm not suggesting this is, you know, better than any of the other sprites that we've looked at today. It's just that I'm kind of particularly fascinated with pulling this amount of rendering out of a small selection of colors in a way that kind of works. All right, well, I feel like I've probably bombarded you with too many Mega Man at this point. Uh, I've just been having fun lately, kind of treating my artwork almost with this touch of experimentation rather than considering it to even be finished or even to be like my preference in a sense. As promised, we'll take a look at the boys up on the CRT and see how they do. So thank you for watching and take care and keep it square.